Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Can you not scratch me please? Let's try this again. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about some plants that have literally come back from the dead. They've uh, been on the struggle bus for quite some time and now they're um, somewhat okay if not thriving. Some are doing better than others, but that's okay because um, each plant kind of goes at their own speed and recovers whenever they want. So yeah, let's get on with today's video. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And yeah, let's just jump right into today's video. So plant number one, I do want to show you guys this one because if you guys remember, I brought it this maybe three, four, five times <laughs> in LECA, in soil, in moss, in any possible medium and it has since decided to finally do okay. So now it's finally trailing again, there's new growth points, it's pushing out new leaves. I've had this for a year and a half, if not two years. I can't really remember, but um, I honestly bought it at about like half the size. It's grown to like three, four times its size and then I had to chop it back because it was like rotting to the core. <laughs> so I had to like chop it up to a bunch of pieces. Most of them did not survive and um, I've since grew this from like literally like three leaves and I'm really proud of it. Although it doesn't look that impressive it's come a long way so that is what matters at the moment and yeah it's beautiful it's silvery it gives me all the silver vibes and um honestly enough for me to not want other silver plants because those are expensive so this one is kind of more on the slightly more affordable side compared to the really rare ones that are really silvery very splashy whatever the case may be but this one very silver very nice so love this, love this, love this. Next up, I do want to show you my Thai constellation. So as you can see, doesn't look that impressive. As you guys may know, this one actually rotted very, very horribly in the beginning of August and it is now October. So it's been like two-ish months and it finally rooted in water. So that's why now it is back in Lucca and there's actually a little root peeking out. Look at that. Look at that root. That is a sign that it's happy. So I'm very, very glad it has finally, you know, come back from the dead. I bought this as like a three leafed plant. And I bought this, I would say a year and a half ago as well. It was one of my kind of beginner rare aeroids. And since then, it's grown out a lot of new leaves and it has killed off a lot of new leaves. So it has now come down to just the one with this little sectoral piece that is creamy and then the rest of it is sort of just splashy and um hopefully you can push out a new leaf monstera thai constellations are very notorious for being very very slow growers and honestly it makes me want to get just a regular monstera deliciosa and just get it over with and not have to deal with the struggle of rotting the thai constellation and the slow growth so lots of uh, cons to this but i guess since I have it, I'm not going to just kill it off. I will be trying to take care of it and hopefully a new leaf will come out for me and grow and thrive in my care. So yeah, this is the Thai Constellation in its uh, single leaf beauty. And I have this paired up with this cute little planter. It's a really cute face pot available on my Etsy shop. So there's a happy side and then there's the angry side. So it's a dual face planter available on my Etsy shop at Glorious Plants and Pots. If you guys are interested, I have a bunch of pots available for sale. I hand make them myself on my pottery wheel and I glaze them, carve them, everything all by myself. So hope you guys enjoy. Um, moving on to the next plant, I do want to talk about this little baby, which is my philodendron pastisanum. Look at that beautiful new leaf. So the only reason I wanted to show you guys this is because it had a very bad episode of spider mites. And um, since then, it was very kind of stunted in terms of growth. It wasn't pushing out new leaves. It didn't really want to do anything for me except for literally kill off leaves. <laughs> so 
<laughs> as you can see some damage of spider mites on the other leaves that one this one has a little bit less i don't really see much of anything on that but the first leaf did not look too hot and then this is the newest leaf it's looking a little bit more pillowy and round which is what i like the older leaves are more pointy and long which is not as cute but this fat leaf is beautiful and um I think it's finally recovered. I do tend to shower this pretty often so I spray it down with a lot of water just because it does get a little bit um, dusty and then I kind of mistaken it for spider mites. I get really anxious about it so I just like to spray it down all the time and make sure the leaves are nice and shiny and beautiful. So yeah this one is the pasta xanum. It got hit with spider mites and then um, never had any root rot so thank god for that but the spider mites were honestly very difficult to handle, but it has come back. It's bounced back and it's doing great. Talk about this plant. Um, sure you guys know about the horrible mealybug infestation that I thought is over, but I do see a plenty of mealybugs. So this is the rotunda flora. I don't know if you guys can see, there's literally mealybugs all over this plant again on the backs of the leaves. Um, it's very hard to show you guys since mealybugs are pretty small, but like I thought I took care of this, but I guess I didn't. So I'm still gonna include it in this video because it was horribly, horribly infested before. And I think I had maybe about like two, three months of zero mealybugs, or at least they were in hiding. So it did recover and it seems to have come back, but that's okay because happens all the time. Um, are you good? Excuse me? <laughs> Calm yourself. I'm talking about my mealybugs. Anyway, this Bertanda flora has really gone through it all. So it had root mealies, it had regular mealies, it was literally all infested and I had to literally treat it a million times. Not only that, but I did have to chop it up into a billion propagations, reroot them and then plant it back into the laka. So it was uh, quite the struggle and I thought I got rid of all the mealies and scrubbed it down, but apparently not. So I'm gonna treat this again with some Safer's End All because I am uh, way too tired of rubbing alcohol and dealing with that. Okay, we're down to the last plant and this is the Hoya Sunrise. So as you guys know, or may not know, not too sure, because I didn't even know what was wrong with it. But I believed it had some type of fungal infection. Like, you can still see some from some of the older leaves, the damage. Like, what is this? This and this, I'm not really sure. It kind of developed over time, and um, since then, it kind of didn't push out any of those leaves anymore. So I'm pretty happy, and there's a bunch of new leaves that came out. So not all of them are really sun stressed, which I'm not really too sure why. They're all under micro lights, but I was told by my friend that the sun stress, you need not only light, but also um, cooler temperatures. So I guess because micro lights make my shelf pretty warm, it's a little hard for the sunrise to uh, stress to its full potential of very beautiful red leaves. So yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about this one because I don't really do much with this. I do see a few mealies, which I guess um, I will have to treat as well. So I'm just literally constantly treating mealybugs. But at least it no longer pushes out really ugly leaves and it's doing a lot better. So these are plants that pretty much recovered from all the stress that I've put it through. <laughs> Whether it's root rot, mealybugs, spider mites, or just pure neglect. <laughs> that is what happens with plants and you have to pretty much stay on top of them all the time otherwise they will die on you. So yeah, I'm pretty glad that these have come back from the dead and they're no longer struggling too bad. So there's that. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you guys have any plants that were struggling before and doing great now. So yeah, me and my cat Bobo would really appreciate it if you subscribed and give this video a thumbs up and commented because that really helps me out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.